So the biggest thing we learned this week was parenting. And it was part of a larger um, situation where we were kind of rigging up a character. So we're going to be going over all of those parts now. So this is the character that we used as a test in class. And you can see that all the pieces are movie clips right now. Um, I kind of did that beforehand so we didn't have to waste our time. Know that if you have multiple things and you go to turn them all into movie clips, they will all turn into one movie clip. There's no way to select multiple objects and turn them into all separate movie clips because you have to name them individually. They all have to have separate names, right? And the computer doesn't know the difference between I've selected two feet and therefore they should be two separate movie clips and I've selected multiple items for the face, therefore there should be one movie clip. It doesn't know the difference. It assumes this situation where you're selecting multiple items to go into one movie clip. Um, so turning your character into movie clips would probably be the most um, tedious part of your task at any given time. Um, but I already did that for you in this file. Um, next up is everything needs to be on separate layers for any number of reasons including parenting and animation. So you do have to make decisions as to, okay, these two things are going to be in the same movie clip and so they're going to move together um, and then maybe the ears are separate, the belt is on this right here, this um, thing is also part of the upper body, so we need, we need to figure that out ahead of time. There are ways to change it all later, so you can run tests and decide, hey, I want to, you know, make the nose move, we can, we can do that. Um, but we need to separate them all into different layers. So I'm actually just going to drag select everything. I'm not going to make a whole bunch of new layers. I'm just going to right click, distribute to layers. And what's really nice is that it names the layers after the thing that I just put on the layer. And then this one should have nothing in it. I'm going to leave it there for now because um, there's something else I'm going to show you. Um, but otherwise, these are all nice and separate. And so we can deal with that. Next step, we still can't go to parenting yet um, because there's always more prep work to do. And one of those prep work things is this pivot point right here. When it comes to animation, that is not where that would rotate from. Um, we need to move the pivot point. This trick only works in terms of saving itself on an object if you have a symbol. So a movie clip or a graphic symbol. Um, if you have a drawn object, doesn't save. If you have a bunch of random things selected, doesn't save. It has to be one singular movie clip. And if you do that, if I move this to where it should rotate from, and I test it, JK, there we go. I test it, um, and it moves where it's supposed to. I can then go somewhere else, move that piece, it moves where I want it to, and then I go back to this one and it's still there. Right, so that's something we have to be concerned with is, is that a lot of these things might not necessarily do that. Um, that it, if you don't have things as, a, um, as some kind of symbol, that pivot point will not save itself. Now, I am moving the other pieces. Um, one thing I should note is that for the head and neck on this, I actually have it off there. If you think about where this should rotate from, don't worry about the eyes not following. It, 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 there's an imaginary neck. So I put this off the symbol basically where the base of the imaginary neck would be. And you can see I'm actually I'm testing everything. I'm not just like moving the pivot point going, oh it goes there. I'm testing things. Now another thing is that I can't see the back, I can't see the ear behind here, I can't see the foot behind here. Where do I put these? Well I can select this head layer and then click that and it gives me an outline of the layer. So I can still see where it is. So I can do this and kind of like figure this out. Hit undo, put things back where they were, but the pivot point is there. And I can do the same thing back here. So you can see behind stuff, decide if this is working the way you want. And then when you're done, put it back. All right, so we move. I assume I moved all the pivot points. Um, and now we can start parenting. So depending on how your file starts, this started as an older file, so it does not have advanced layers turned on yet. Some files you work with will already have that turned on. This is the button for parenting. Um, it's grayed out. <laughs> and it says advanced layers need to be enabled to use parenting. Um, and unfortunately, there's no 
good way to turn this. Th there's nothing like up here that lets me um, turn on advanced layers, which is unfortunate. Um, but it is a new feature, so that may be why. Um, so what I can do instead is I click this button. It's going to open up a window that we don't actually need to use. When I do that, it says layer depth. Oh, you need to use advanced layers. Turn this on. It's like, yes, click the button. And I do that, and it gives me this thing. I don't need this. <laughs> um, but by turning it on, it gave me advanced layers, and now I can click this button. I click that. And what I'm going to do is I need to parent things. You drag the child to the parent. So if I want the ear to follow the head, which I do, I need to click on the left ear and then drag this color box to this one here. It only works in like this dark gray area. And when I do that, if I move the head, the ear follows. All right, so I'm gonna do that for all the things that should follow the head, the left eye, the right eye, and the right ear. I believe that's everything. And when I move the head now, yeah, there we go. Now nothing's becoming discombobulated. Um, and you can see these four things are parented under this thing. Or you can say these four things are a child of this thing. That's how the sort of parenting nomenclature works. Now what? Well, now I need the face to be on the upper body. And unfortunately on this file, I called this body instead of lower body. That was silly. All right. Um, lower body, the, this is usually the root of all your movement. So this should really be the base of everything. So then I put the upper body to the lower body. You can see this expands to fit more of the tree. I also have the right foot that needs to go to the lower body and the left foot that needs to go to the lower body. And furthermore, I don't need the right foot to be all the way down here. You can see, you can look at this tree and go, okay, these things are around the face and this is around here. And then, whoa, this is like all the way down here. It just needs to be behind the lower body. Unless the foot's somehow going to fly up in front of his face, which I don't expect to happen. There we go. Get this a little bit more organized. So the two feet are around the lower body, and the upper body is also to the lower body, and the face is to there. And what that means is that if I move this lower body here... Wait, wrong button. There we go. The whole character moves. But if I rotate... Um, there we go this little character moves. I, this, this upper body is not built to really rotate very much, so don't worry about it if it doesn't look great. Um, and then when you move the head, the rest of the pieces move, but the ear can still move independently. The foot can still move independently. Right? That's the, that's the goal. That's the dream, is to have one, these pieces follow each other. Um, <clears throat> like this. And if you want to undo some parenting for whatever reason, maybe you need to fix something and keeping it parented is getting in your way, you can right click, just kidding, regular click, um, and say remove parent. Or you can change the parent to something else. But if I just say remove parent, nothing happens. There we go. It separates itself. And now I can change this right here. I can change the pivot point or whatever. And then I can just drag it back over here when I want it to be connected again. Um, all of this has to be done before animating. We haven't learned how to animate yet, but once we do, you have to remember to do things in this order. Movie clips first, then layers, then pivot points, then parenting, and then and only then can you get animation in. And as I said before, you want to test everything as you're going. All right, so that was the file we used in class. Um, the homework file is to do that with this, um, but to duplicate the arms on this side so that you have two sets of arms and to kind of do this independently. Um, also, one final thing. Um, I said before that you can't um, put multiple things as multiple movie clips. You also can't put multiple layers into a movie clip, at least not in one go. So if I select all of this stuff, I know it's on separate layers. And if I right click and I say convert to symbol, it's gonna throw it all on one layer, uh, convert to symbol, 
and it just got rid of everything, and now it's all in the left foot, and it's a hot mess. Like, nothing is parented anymore, so we don't want that. Um, did I undo that properly? Nope. There it is. Um, so how do we get this to work? Well, we need to do a bit of a workaround, and it's stupid, I'm sorry, but this is what the best I've come up with. You grab the, the make a square tool, it doesn't matter, and then you go to the, I have this thing that says character right here, and I go to the top corner, top corner just works out better, um, I'll show you why in a second. And I just make a symbol. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It just has to be there. I convert this to a symbol. And I call it whole character. Great. Now I go over here and I shift select all my layers. And I right click and I say cut layers. Do not hit control X. That will not work. You need to use the layers menu. It has to say one of these things. And that doesn't exist anywhere else. You can't use hotkeys for it. Now I take my ridiculous stupid square and I double click to go into that symbol. So it says whole character, right click where it says layer one and say paste layers. And so it pastes all of my layers in there. And the reason I put this in the top right hand corner, I'm sorry, top left hand corner is because this is the registration point. It measures everything from here. So all of these things, their positioning is from this point. So if I put this in the top left hand corner, then everything ends up in the same location. If I put the square in the middle, then they're all gonna end up down here. Once I do that, I can select the thing and get rid of it because I don't need that square. And then I go back out to scene one and my whole character is sitting in a movie clip called whole character. Why do that at all? Well, because a lot of times you need to still move the whole character around for some reason, maybe place effects on it. Um, it just depends on what you're doing. It's a, even, so even, oh, that's not where that is. Even with the parenting. So let's say this was, I don't know, a ghost or a flying alien or something. And I wanted to have it floating. So yes, technically I could grab this right here and have it go, ooh, you know, like floating and then waggle its feet and its ears and everything else, blink its eyes, and all those pieces it would fall and that'd be great. But what if I also, like kind of independently of that, needed to rotate the character around because I needed to spin it. There's sometimes there's two different things that have to happen to the same part of this and it's not possible to keep it on the exact same part of this. This does control everything but you may still need to do something to the whole character separate and distinct from what's going on in the animation and so this allows you out here to kind of have this extra level um, maybe you could do the floating out here and that allows you to I keep doing that that allows you to have the where is it rocking back and forth in here and so this can have keys on it out here and this could have keys on it out here and there there are very legitimate reasons to keep those things separate so just keep in mind if you want to take a whole lot of stuff that's already set up on layers put it into one movie clip you can do that it's just a little bit of a rigmarole but it does maintain everything all of your file structures are okay um, Let's see, so we have, I want to make sure to remind everyone that when you have these things um, set up like this, these are all different symbols. Um, that's on purpose because this one, you know, looks different than that one. Um, and I could very easily, if I wanted to, go into here and, um, there we go, change this foot. So if I wanted it to be a little bit darker to kind of differentiate... this foot still stays the same. If you duplicate these pieces here, like maybe you say, you know, modify, sorry, I need to make a copy, obviously, copy and paste, there we go. Modify, transform, flip horizontal. And I move this over here. If I just do it like that, and I don't make it a separate symbol, then, like, I don't, if I don't duplicate symbols in the library, then this is the same thing. And what that means is that any changes I make get made across both of these. Now, there might be reasons you need that to happen. Maybe you want it to have striped arms, right? There's, there's, there's reasons to keep these the same. There's also reasons to keep them different. So there's no right answer to the question of, do I just make a copy in the scene and move it over here? 
and so they both say instance of upper arm, instance of upper arm, or do I duplicate it in the library and make a change like that so that it's right foot, left foot? There is no right answer. It's how you want to do that because it's what you need in the end. So what you do for homework might be very different than what you end up doing for your character because you might need to do different stuff. All right, um, but the homework is just to rig up this character. If you hate the color, go ahead and change it. I won't mind. Um, but to make a second set of arms, I believe it's spelled out here. Yeah. Um, duplicate the arms for the other side. Distribute the pieces to different layers. Rename layers accordingly. Please do not leave it if everything is layer copy. Um, collect all the layers into a single movie clip. Change the pivot points. And then use layer parenting. Um, it is... you for the most part want to do things in that order technically speaking you could turn things into movie clips after putting them on different layers that doesn't change anything um, but it's a lot of these do have to stay in that order um, so it's not a bad idea to follow this order